Well, guys, the pain for the stock market might finally be over within the next four months. The Fed meeting minutes that just came out this week have given us a clear path for the Fed to pivot, which should result in some big relaxation in stock market valuations. And as a result, increase our conviction in buying the dip in our favorite companies today. Yes, the past 12 months have been extremely difficult, but as an investor, it's what you do during these bear markets that's going to set you up for the next bull market. And right now is one of the best times to be an investor and to learn how to grow. And the recent Fed meeting minutes are starting to validate the idea that the end of this bear market could be closer than you think. But as usual, guys, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. To start things off, let's quickly summarize what took place in the Fed meeting minutes, which is essentially a recap of the FOMC meeting that took place on November 1st and November 2nd. Essentially, we got both sides of the argument really exercised in this meeting minutes. Part of the Fed said that they expect to dial back the pace of interest rate hikes in 2023, but they also said at the same time that they expect the terminal rate to be somewhat higher than expected. And because we are obviously stock market investors, it's incredibly important for us to pay attention to interest rates because it's going to determine the fate of most growth companies, not only in terms of revenue growth and net income, but also whether or not they're able to actually survive the next few years, because obviously the cost of capital is now going up exponentially. And so the bottom line here is that if you understand clearly what caused the stock market to peak in early 2021, you can probably clearly understand what is going to cause the stock market to rally within the next six months. And that is obviously the fact that interest rates are now reaching probably their terminal level that the Fed set in 2022. Now, the terminal level has gone up over the past few months as CPI came in a little bit hotter than expected. But we have already done most of the work the Fed wanted to do for interest rate hikes. They're simply now trying to decide how to close off the situation and leave the terminal rate at the perfect level to not only induce a very mild recession, but also bring down and keep inflation and CPI down. And so why is what happened in early 2021 so important for the next year? Well, if you guys remember, growth stocks peaked after the February 2021 CPI report, which showed us that inflation hit around 2.3% year over year. Now, that is obviously after the stimulus checks were handed out throughout 2020 and 2021. And it's precisely in that time frame when most risk on assets and growth stocks peaked. Yes, the S&P 500 started tanking in January of 2022. But the other parts of the market, the more riskier assets like small caps and mid caps peaked in 2021. And that is obviously well ahead of any interest rate hike, typically around nine months ahead, because obviously March of 2022 is when we got the first interest rate hike of 25 basis points. And so guess what? If it took the stock market nine months to price in the fact that interest rates were going to go up, it could also take the stock market around nine months to start pricing in the interest rate cut for the Fed's terminal rate. Meaning whenever the Fed actually starts to pivot and cut interest rates towards 0% within the next five years, the stock market is going to try to time that nine months ahead of time. And as we've already heard from the Fed, they expect to start pausing or reducing the size of rate hikes within the next 12 to 15 months. And so if you do the math, yes, within the next six months is when we could technically see the stock market bottom. Now, obviously, that is considering that CPI does not continue to go higher or some external catalyst doesn't happen where we see a new war would obviously skyrockets oil prices. But given the situation right now and assuming everything stays stagnant, we should see the market bottom within the next six months. But you guys already know my situation. I continue to be a buyer of stocks regardless of what the market does in the short term. I continue to buy my quality companies in which I have a high conviction for. And obviously, I continue to analyze the situation around their bankruptcy potential and the damage that's going to be done by the Fed interest rate path. But this chart right here should help validate the idea around not timing the market. As you can see right here, every single time the Fed pivots and starts pausing or cutting interest rates, a recession typically happens within the next six months. And as we all know, we expect this recession to happen in 2023. And what do we know about recessions? Recessions are always the best time to buy 
stocks. Even though in early 2022 we saw this fake recession take place, chances are we're going to see a real recession in 2023. And the Fed, as you can see, has historically always pivoted around four to five to six months before that recession actually happens. So if economists actually expect this recession to happen in 2023, chances are the Fed's going to be cutting rates very, very soon in the next four months. And the reality is that leading indicators are showing us that a lot of the damage has already been done. Buying conditions for homes in the U.S., according to the UMICH index, is down to 2009 levels. And the rate of personal savings as a percentage of disposable personal income has collapsed to almost 2005 levels, which means that at some point in time, people are simply not going to have enough money to spend. And that is obviously the direct causation of CPI, where around 40% of that index is calculated on consumer spending. And with supplier lead times also having collapsed and gone below pre-pandemic levels, it really goes to show you that supply is starting to increase and demand is starting to wane, meaning that prices and times for deliveries are starting to come down. And even the most important indicator about the money supply, which is the M2 indicator, is showing us that on a rolling seven-month percentage change basis, we are below October 2008 levels, meaning right now the Fed has tightened significantly from what they were doing in 2020 and 2021, and a lot of liquidity has simply been taken out of the market. And this is obviously a leading indicator of where inflation will be heading. And as a result, we'll decide what the Fed is going to do and also the path of rates. And it's very clear from what the stock market's been doing over the past 12 months that the number one thing the market cares about is interest rates. And if interest rates start getting cut, then the market will start rallying insanely. And guess what? Even the Fed knows that the recession is going to happen in 2023. It's just a question of how severe it's going to be. But regardless of what happens, we all know that as stock market investors, the best time is to buy during recessions. And the difference with this recession right now is that we've been anticipating this since the start of 2022. And so just like the stock market is showing glimpse of timing this Fed pivot, the stock market is also going to show glimpse of timing this recession, meaning the stock market is going to be running way ahead of when this actual recession gets called out in 2023. So even if you're trying to time the bottom of the stock market before buying stocks, right now you want to pay attention to these leading indicators. I mean, there's a very easy reason for why so many investors fail in the market. It's because they simply don't understand the psychology of the market and look at the face value of any of the data they're seeing. But the reality is that all the balance sheet, the income statement, the valuation data is available to every single one that has access to an internet connection. So what edge does that really give you in the market? The real edge is developed by trying to time or understand the psychology of the market and using that as your interest for buying stocks. You obviously want to pick the right companies, and chances are even my own portfolio, some of my companies might not survive, but at the end of the day, I'm balancing my risk with my reward, and my goal is to make more money in my profitable companies than lose on my loss-making businesses. And that psychological strategy is exactly what investors in the most successful firms use to invest in the stock market, which is exactly what I want to show and discuss on this channel. But as usual, guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.